right, I'll see you later, yeah? Okay? Um, I meet an awful lot of people and I, uh, we have a bit of a natter and get to find out what we're all about, you know. Yeah. During the day it's the, uh, the older generation, at night time it's the younger generation. And it's the younger generation that uh, interests me because some of them can't control their urges. Hang on you. No Can need you for not that. sound your alarm or your um, horn because it's after seven o'clock it's illegal. Run me over, I should, you bitch. If they've got no respect for me, I've got no respect for them. And respect is earned. You don't get it in five minutes, you earn it. I could be sitting here watching a good film. All of a sudden, the phone will go. Um, is that Diane? And I'll say, yes. I've got problems. Could you come round and help me sort it out? And that's what I used to do. I'd get my shoes on. My mum go, oh, not again. And I'd get my coat on. i say, bye, mum. Gone. We had an incident last week, weekend. Three o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call. Di, there's a girl screaming. Now, the only time you should hear a girl scream is either, one, she's been murdered, two, she's been raped, or three, she's been beaten up. Good Hello. evening. I believe you had some kind of uh, trouble here last night with some girls screaming. Um, yes, there was the guys coming back a bit late and being a bit kind of... My name's Diana Merritt, by the way, and I'm uh, the, the regular um, neighbourhood watch coordinator and I walk the area. Is there any chance I can come in and have a word? Yeah, certainly, certainly. We think we're going to have a nice quiet evening, we're just getting interested in a nice film and bang, the telephone goes. And yes, yes, this is her, yes, yes. I'll be there in ten minutes, so go bang, wallop. Her evening is spoiled. She, she'll never refuse anybody, because I'm always afraid that somebody might come up behind her and grab her or do something to her. And she, being a woman, sometimes she's out on a patrol. You, you don't know what's going to happen, do you? I do feel very, very helpless. Sometimes I cry about it. I'm a local girl and I was born at number 34 Wellington Terrace. Then when I was 11, we decided to move up to Birmingham because my dad was a Bromley person. And then when he died, I decided that it was time to move back again. When I came back in, oh my God, what a, what a dire strait this whole town is, it's dirty. <laughs> and because I started right away, it's got to be cleaned up, it's got to be looking good, you know. We'll be down the back, al back alley of Marlborough Road to go to the spa shop on our way, then we can come back through the other one because I want to check to see if they took them boilers away. Yeah, can't do. Yeah. Apparently there's a couple of armchairs and everything that they dumped there sometime. Jeff started to work with me in the middle, um, I would say around about March of last year because he was having so much problems with the Bowling Green Park. This is how I met them. They phoned me up one night and I went up there and he said, what are we going to do? I said, I'll tell you what, sign yourself up for Neighbourhood Watch. I said, and we'll have a better time of it by going, I said, we'll walk the streets. That's how Jeff and I got together. But it was ideal because he's a bloke and big stocky bloke, put the fear of God up some youngsters like, and there's me, short, fat and airy, you know, don't know where I'm going to go next sort of thing. Right, see you later. Bye bye. See you later, Jane. Right, first port of call, spa shop? No. Yeah, OK, fine. Got a fiver and a whistle. See you all later. Yeah, all right, bye. See ya. <laughs> we'll just have a look at the park and see if we've locked the gate. Right. 
And the gentleman that's coming down the alleyway is the one that should walk in the park. Up. Sometimes, with a week ago, it was somewhere between half past ten and twenty to eleven when he locked the gate. But if you approach him and ask him about it, he'll say, no, I locked it at nine o'clock. It's designated as uh, nine o'clock closed in summer. And that's when it should be closed. If you're not careful, so some people will stay there all night. They'll keep down in the park. I've worked really hard from day one by getting, what I did was to get a public meeting and I think it shook everybody. Then we got the persons that I was talking to out on the streets. We decided that we'd invite them to a public meeting. You, you sort of met different people and you think to yourself, now how am I going to handle this? Because me, I'm, I'm a short, fat, airy little bugger and I'm uncouth, it's, I'm very uncouth. Well, these were people who was highly educated. First impression was that um, her mouth was large enough for three people and it lived a life of its own separate from her brain. Um, that, that impression has been uh, mitigated over the last couple of years. I, I couldn't believe that I was so rotten to Martin Hart on the very night I first met him uh, because the poor bugger had only been in the job 12 months and I give him hell. Diane and I have a a way of working now. I know what she means. She understands the uh, rather more formal language that I use and um, we, we can communicate perfectly well that way. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. I was inclined to, to be uh, let off a head of steam when she goes at something and uh, we talk to each other regularly but we're actually coming at it from the same perspective. Uh, we both want what's right for the area. Di's got her methods and I've got my methods and uh, somewhere in between there's a solution. The students is all right, they seemed a nice bunch, but as soon as ever they get drinking and they come out the clubs, they cannot keep quiet. And they yap and they yap and then they start screaming and then the words come out yapping and blinding and it's so unreasonable that I don't think they do it at home. All right, why should a 75 year old lady be kept awake all night and then the following day where I'm supposed to be taking her out somewhere really nice, she can't go because she's so tired. She doesn't want to sleep all day because the sun is shining and it's a nice glorious day. And that day was for her. I aren't supposed to lose me temper because that brings on, I got high blood pressure and I have heart attacks, heart tremors, like, and they're afraid that I'll bring on a real heart attack. So I must keep cool. There's a lot of people in Falmouth I don't like. I will we'll be honest about that. They brought in so many people from out of town that Falmouth is not Falmouth that I used to remember. I can't understand why we're not allowed to swim along the seafront like we used to as kids. They've stopped all of that. And I'm thinking, why? And then I find out that there's these private investors coming in and doing taking away our seafront. We used to have to stand at those railings and, and look at the water and look at the boats. Yeah, but we all used to swim off of this yeah. years ago and they've stopped us from doing it. They used to play water polo over on the they customs did, yeah. house quay. Yeah. Don't do it anymore. We're going to lose our seafront for people, say, from London coming down here buying a privately owned flat. If, if they've got to have iron gates, go away, because it's a prison. We're not going to live in a prison. <laughs> it's amazing what you can see in daylight, isn't it? And this is supposed to be where the elite lives. Don't mind if I puke. Welcome to Port Pendennis Village. You're not allowed in. Everything around that you see here is all 
on a press button action system. We, the locals, we don't count, we just pay. Watch. One minute I'll be extremely nice to people, which I tend to be at most times, but then you, all of a sudden something would click and I would be the most vicious, nastiest, roaring person you'd ever wish to meet. I used to be the head housekeeper at the Madeira Hotel in on the Cliff Road in Falmouth and I lost weight from ten and a half stone down to eight stone. But what I didn't realise was I'd, I'd um, got a lump and I thought, oh God, here we go. I was so petrified. I had the examination um, two weeks later and they said straight away, very bombastically, you've got cancer. It made you stop and think. So you've got so much to see, so much to do, so much to go for. I think I started to do everything in 12 months like there was always something there that thought, if you shut your eyes, you're dead. You ain't going to wake up. I think, personally speaking, because of what I went through, nothing stood in my way then. I'd go up against the biggest bloke and I'd say to him straight, you know, you're gaining everything and you're taking everything and you're not giving anything back. My temper got the better of me, I think, because I was so fed up with having to pay council tax and it was getting higher and higher and the, the whole of Falmouth was getting dirtier and dirtier. On Wednesday, I got a phone call to say about rubbish in this alleyway. All of this was absolutely crawling. And you, you couldn't believe the rubbish that was going on. And this time, we got a name because they left their uh, student uh, application papers behind. And it's good it is, because I've got, I got one for doing it. The government here has promised a referendum and today the new Europe minister insisted that would happen. All right, people think I'm an odd case and I'm a nasty piece of works and everything because they think I'm coming down heavy on them all the time. But if they only realised that everybody's got a life, no matter how, which way you want to look at it, no matter which way you want to run your life, you still have to give respect. Now remember, Whatever you do, if anybody tries to have a go at you, bugger off, leave it alone, yeah? Yeah. And don't screaming on the way home. <laughs> if we can work together, we can make a whole place, not only jumping with activities, but we can also make it um, a pleasurable experience. Is it raining? All the dogs outside. Veggie, come on in, boy. Come on, Veg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was raining. But some of them at my age, and they, they give up, you know what I mean? Give up! They don't want to give up. Life is too short to give up. You want to get out there and enjoy it. I mean, there's things I want to do. And there's loads of stuff I want to do. But I never get around to doing it. There's always something that holds you back. Mm. Some years are absolutely brilliant. But some, the year that started all of this off was absolutely diabolical. And that was because nobody took control. Nobody. And I'm afraid they can call me the biggest old bitch they want to do because I'm still going to be living here and I'm still going to be doing what I'm doing. Because one day, one of them is going to say to me, God, what a woman you were. I love it. Cheers, kids. <laughs>